How are we doing, everyone? And welcome back to another edition of NASCAR's DFS Pick Show. I am your host, TK Nation 47, joined by Mega Roller 31. Um, pretty fun weekend so far. Uh, I would say it has a lot of ups and downs, mostly a little, a little bit on the downside for me when it comes to roster construction. But uh, how are you doing, Mega? And uh, are you looking forward to the Ally 400? Yeah, I think um, with, with Xfinity, I noticed that the people qualified after the show last night, there was very few that didn't like qualify pretty much line up with like what their speeds were. But there were a couple like um, Barry and um, uh, a couple of them that were a little bit lower and obvious cash plays, nothing like the truck race where you had two guys um, fail tech and not even go and John Hunter Nemich had completely botch it um, to make right. a lot of talk. So I'm hoping Cup ends up kind of the same. Uh, there were some anomalies in practice that um, we'll see. So same thing. I took the average speed of Darlington, Atlanta, and Dover, um, kind of similar tracks to this, and um, took their qualifying their practice speed and made that the starting order and use all the other like season data and um, track the data from Darlington. Again, closest track I could find and we'll see what's yeah. happening. This series is a little bit different because we are saying like the last, um, the truck and Xfinity haven't been there in 10 years. It's been like 1983 since they've been here. So no current driver, even Ryan Newman should have raced at this track ever. So, right. Yeah, I'm looking forward to tomorrow. I think it brings in a different dynamic for the NASCAR series. Um, I think what is fun to see is that with practice and qualifying, we're not going to get, you know, somebody with battery issues or we're not going to get somebody with, you know, a down splitter or anything, anything crazy like that. We're going to have all those kinks kind of sorted out. And I think it might make for better racing. I think that's what we've kind of been missing here for the last couple of weeks and um you know it doesn't help Hendrix one two three every single week <laughs> right and the thing is i mean yeah they're they qualified or they practice pretty well here but uh we yeah. learned a couple of things from xfinity and hopefully the cup people were taking uh notes on it uh break temperature they got yeah. to something out they need extra coolant because these guys were blowing tires and like several of them lost their brakes because they overheated because they have so much speed especially with this high horsepower package that cup's going to run going into the corners that they are like heavy heavy on the brakes and they were just on fire literally yeah so, um, i did notice that too that was a good thought uh, a little bit better equipment up here in the cup series so i, I think yeah, absolutely yeah but we might have some um you know, I guess, answer to that problem that is seemingly going on between the two series before this. But but yeah, I mean, still, you have to have um, you have to have good a, a good setup here. So uh, crew chiefs maybe weighed a little bit more into our decision making. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, let's get into it. Uh, this is sorted out by practice speed. So uh, we have William Byron at the top at ninety seven hundred. Um, it would be fastest in practice. Uh, what are your thoughts on him? And if you want to just go into town with the Hendrick cycle of this, I mean, you, um, you got to you got to play anyone from Hendrick right now, right? I, whoever gets the poll, I think here, yeah. I think Larson will probably get it. But I think Byron learned a lot from the truck race. It wasn't his fault they didn't finish it, and his crew chief was on the box there. So I think that they learned a lot also. So yep, yeah. 9700 you're getting some discount from larson as well yeah. if you can get if you can get byron or Lar larson on the front row i think they're both viable tomorrow and, and in GPPs. looked at the race today like we all thought bush was going to jump out and lead but yeah cindric did and like even though he crashed and then fenced the race had he finished he got almost the first stage in in points there so if it's there's going to be a split and dominator points here then yeah, definitely uh, I would consider like taking who could be like 1A to Larson to maybe get out there and lead early if Larson doesn't. Exactly. And I think uh, Byron's probably set up to be that kind of guy. I wouldn't sleep on Chase Elliott. Uh, we no. haven't seen him dominate a race though. And uh, his price is suggesting of that. And um, maybe, uh, maybe a decent fade um, if, if, you know, Larson and Byron kind of steal a show, but I mean, this is Chase Elliott, this is Hendrick. I'm going to have exposure. Yeah. Yeah, I think you have to. I just hope he 
kind of draws a start in like the 10 to 15 range. If we're lucky. <laughs> I doubt it. He, yeah. He's going to be top five. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I just limit my exposure and go heavier on Byron and Larson and maybe it pays off. Maybe it doesn't. Next up, we have Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Kind of a surprise. At yeah, exactly. Practice. Yeah. This was your surprise. I, I knew it was, it would be 7,200 is a pretty good price tag. Uh, what does Ricky know about Nashville? I, I don't know. Um, it's got a yeah. <laughs> so um, I, I, if he's, if he qualifies, out of the top 10 then I, i'd consider him with the speed here yeah but, uh, his numbers aren't off awful uh have him finishing about 15th so um I, we'll see i mean if he, if he gets to pull or something uh, obviously he's got some speed here and at that price he's considered but um he's one to keep an eye on let's just say that sure yeah value for sure if he is starting outside the top 15 uh even maybe closer to like the 14, 13 range, you know, you could consider him in GPPs at that point, but could be a cash lock if he qualifies pretty badly tomorrow. Uh, Tyler Reddick, 8,600, raced in the Xfinity series today. Uh, any love for Tyler Reddick? He was average there, but it does look he like they put some, they did paint some lines and put some speedy grip down after the truck race to kind of create different grooves in here. So yeah, if there's a high groove, which it seems like everybody on the restart took the high side. So right. um, that favors him. So potentially, I mean, not going to rule him out. It all depends on where he qualifies. Yeah, definitely one of if, the guys we if need. If he to takes work. like the Atlanta race, which he could have had like a rack or mechanical problems or something, um, his composite's not bad. Sure. All right. Cool. We're in, we're in on Reddick if he qualifies poorly. <laughs> Kurt Busch in the 8,300. Uh, you know my stance on Kurt Busch. I think the, I think the game has passed him by. I think the cars are too much for him, and I've been out on Kurt Busch this year. Yeah, the same thing with Ross Chastain was really disappointing in the truck race. Like, it's kind of weird that both these cars, like, their practice averages. So maybe they, maybe they know something. Maybe. Sure. They yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess you could think that with both of them back to back here, uh, maybe they just had a good setup for the time and temperature of the day. Um, so maybe, yeah, maybe this is a spot you can take these guys, but if they qualify too far up, I'm definitely out. I mean, Ross Chastain's been a good source of value, but 7,600, uh, we're starting to get pretty high up he was a guy that we were relying on in that 6k range and now he's getting he's getting the price bumps because he's been successful and he's been in winning lineups so people are going to be gravitating towards Ross Chastain and I and I'm trying to time up the the right time to fade so I'm that's where my my thoughts are so far with Ross Chastain he's been a guy that people have been rostering in 60 percent of their lineups week in week out so if this is a spot where Ross Chastain might be chalky at somewhere and, and it's not any starting like within like the first 15 to 19 spots, I, I might be inclined to throw the, the, uh, the fade. What are your thoughts on, on that? Well, I just remembered, I, I saw a note that uh, Ganassi did come and test at this track. So that is uh, perhaps why they did so well, but still, if you look at Ross Chain's composite on um, most of the tracks that are similar, he's about a 15th place driver here. So they're going to qualify well then. Right. If they've tested here. They have practice down. I bet you they have really good one lap speed tomorrow. Right. But like overall for the whole thing and the package and everything, he's yeah. not a 15th place driver. So I think he's going to qualify too high. Too high. And we're going to bet and we're going to bail. So uh, I like, I like where this is heading. Uh, Denny Hamlin for Joe Gibbs uh, racing 10 one, uh, not terrible. I mean, Denny is due for a win. Is yeah, it, is it, is it a racetrack that we're not expecting though? Yeah. But look at, look at the Darlington Atlanta Dover. Dover. Yeah. He's got third for in this package and in tracks like this. So yeah, I think he's, um, I hope he like qualifies like eighth to 10th or something. And I think yep. he, can, he can get up there and place differential, lead some laps, finish well. Yeah, definitely in on him. 
Yeah, I like that. Denny Hamlin, um, somebody's got to break up the 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 Hendrick, you know, force here. And Kyle Bush, Denny Hamlin, they seem like the drivers that could do it. Uh, there's another name that I'm I'm liking later on and we'll talk about. But yeah, Denny Hamlin, I'm in on him too. Uh Ryan Newman, 6,800. Uh let's I mean, let's, like I said, he's so old. He still didn't race at this track back in 1983. But right, his rookie year was probably the next one in '84. But no, not, <laughs> not not really interested in here. If you, even if you throw out the Dover, he's about a 14th place um, driver. So if he qualifies anywhere 15th or better, no. Correct. 100% agree. Um, in that 20 range, though, we are in on. Ryan Newman. I think I would be. I think you would be too if he starts, if he's qualifying poorly tomorrow. Uh, Alex Bowman, 9,300. Uh, he's one of these guys I just like to sprinkle GPP uh, MME style and then pick my spots for high dollar exposure. I don't think I'm going in that route, high dollar, but obviously we haven't gotten qualifying yet. But I'm just thinking, is there something he can do at this kind of track? Um, I mean, what are your thoughts on Alex Bowman? Um, I actually had a, an epiphany on these Hendrix drivers this week, and just just like thinking about it, you have it, to, it, yeah. It, but no, it really seems like this all was like a well thought out plan because like Jimmy Johnson should have raced this year and had like the whole like pomp and circumstance retirement thing, but I think they realized that Larson was out and that he was going to serve a one year suspension and that he would be available. And yeah. just looking at the rest of the team, like Chase Elliott did, did really well, but I think that they saw there was going to be some regression there. William Byron is up and coming. He still needs a little bit more, but I think he's going to be very successful and continue to build on that. Yeah. Then you have Alex Bowman, who they just signed for two more years because maybe yeah. somebody down the line that they're looking for to, to come in this program. And he's pretty much like Mark Martin. I think he's going to always be up in like the top five, maybe win a championship like once, but I don't mm -hmm. think he's got the pedigree to be like the perennial one. But then you had Larson. It seems like a lot of maybe the stuff that, you know, they did invest in Jimmy Johnson and like he just got the best of the best because they saw like he's the one that's here and now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean... Mr. H has certainly put a lot of chips into his basket this year. I think you're definitely right about that. I mean, the results kind of speak for themselves. I do like Byron and, you know, Chase Elliott is going to be the most popular driver for the next 20 years. So right. leaning on that money and, and, you know, this just kind of pedigree of, of Hendrick Motorsports, it's, it's crazy to think. And I, you know, Bo Bowman's not a bad driver either. He's certainly no, not a popular you, guy. If you look but, at him, he's got the fifth best um and he's he's solid like he's a good technical driver whereas yeah like, he doesn't make mistakes you don't see him with pit road penalties you don't see him like his pit crew does well uh, -huh. uh he's in a re uh restarts he doesn't like make big mistakes he doesn't like push it too early he doesn't spin his tires like he's a fundamentally sound driver right new track i i could see how that works out for him this is also a sponsored uh you know, the, the, his his ally yeah, uh, sponsorship is sponsoring the race, too. So, you know, that might take a little bit away from his preparation because he's going to have to do sponsorship interviews and meet and greets and stuff like that. But, you know, these guys do that every week. So I, I don't read too much into it. But, yeah, sponsorship race, um, you know, they might have a little bit of extra money invested into Alex Bowman uh for this race next up we have chase briscoe and our eric almarola isn't it weird Just, how these cars like from the same yeah cars are like grouped together this there's more situations like this down the road too when you when you look at practice uh practice speeds i wonder if is there there's no drafting is there but maybe just teams working together maybe yeah to get notes and get a feel for the air and, and you know the aerodynamics and you know maybe that's why we're seeing guys grouped together. But yeah, I mean, Briscoe and Almirola, any any love for them? I mean... If you throw out Almirola, uh, Darlington, I mean, another similar track that I didn't use is Richmond. And I think he was top 10 there. So 
I don't know. This, this is way too high if he qualifies up here. And you see, like, he's projected for negative five TK points. Just don't yeah. Know that, folks, that's just dumb. But, but still, um, you know, I think he wasn't bad in the All Star race. Like, he, he got in. Um, yeah, he did get in. Do it, and, and he seemed to do well. So, uh, it, it all depends. I, I think a GPP play if he's wherever he's starting, but um, not a priority. Briscoe, like if he's starting this high up, no. I think um, looking at him, he's. I, I need him to like start. Yeah. Over Twenty. Yeah, twenty um, three and back. I'm in on Briscoe for that price tag. But Almirola probably out. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't know. I don't see anything Almirola's done this year to make me roster him. We do have Ryan Berlaney in the eighty-seven at eighty-seven hundred. Team Penske. Uh, you know, this is a driver that won Atlanta earlier this year. I mean, we have to go to the well here, right? Well, it, it, it's you got Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde here because he's really good at the high horse. Or he's not good at the high horse power tracks, but he obviously with Atlanta is good with tire wear tracks. And they actually right. gave him an extra set of tires just because this is like actually running like a short track with the braking and stuff. They're really in the concrete. They're really running these tires down. So um, I don't know. I don't see him getting up and leading. I do see him um, if he does qualify in the teens down here getting up into the top 10 so i think there's some place differential 8700 yeah. not a bad price for him yeah actually that's and, that's what's that no I, i'm looking and i see his finish projections third and his average speed is like fourth so yeah uh, yeah this might be a sleeper yep i'm in on blaney as well uh next up we have eric jones richard petty motorsports 6900 He's be getting a better model here. He's going to get dumped. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. Uh, I mean, the team's been getting better. Yeah. A couple of good finishes. Yeah, but I look at the the sixteen, twenty four, and twenty first, twenty second overall. I, he'd he'd have to be in the twenties to start for me to consider. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, next up, we have Matt Benedetto. Wood Brothers, 7,900, a little pricey. Going to need a good starting spot with this with this pick. Yeah, I mean, he was really good at Atlanta, so um, struggled a little bit at, at Dover. Darlington was somewhere in the middle. So if, if he starts 15th on back, maybe. Sure, I'd agree. Next up, we have Mr. Consistency, Chris Busher. Um 7,400. I mean, this guy paints value week in, week out. I don't see why this would change. Yeah. I mean, he, if he starts in the teens, he could get up into the top 10, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely in on Busher. The status quo has not changed on him. Next up, we have Joey Logano. And this was the guy I wanted to get to earlier uh, when I talked about, um, you know, potential uh, winners of the race. Like, I know everyone's going to be thinking Kyle Bush, but Joey Logano is quite the sleeper, and this is the lowest price tag I've ever seen on Joey Logano. Eighty nine hundred seems pretty ridiculous, and this is a guy that um, has like top five car upside at any track. But you know, obviously they've been in a little bit of a lull. But Logano is still Logano, and he is definitely not somebody to be taken for granted, especially at that price tag. Yeah, no, I I, I like him. I hope he qualifies. Like below 15th i think that would be a great gift oh my god it'd be a it would be it would be chalky too yeah. I, I i you know what would be perfect if he starts like ninth or 10th and you could just roll out that gpp play and then play it pair them with dominators you know go with your larson and your byron and and or denny and then just make him driver three i think he would be a perfect guy that could come away and nip a win at the end uh, maybe not a dominator, but certainly a guy that has top, top five, five yeah. yeah, top five car upside. So I love that. Ryan Priest, 6K. Obviously, he had won the um, Xfin uh, truck series, right? So he's uh, he's got some experience on the track. Yeah. Um, hopefully, we can get a good starting spot. 
Hopefully we don't get a good starting spot, but I think well, we, we chart. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For, for when, DFS we say good, when we say good, we mean bad. It's like opposite day here. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. Good spot um, for DFS purposes. Yeah. Um, I, again, like I've always respected him. He's kind of like um, a cheaper version of Busher where yeah. it's just, just consistent. So um, he's the, Jesse Little that we played in Xfinity last year, where the guys were cheap, but you know he'd be consistent. Now Jesse Little's not that this year, but um, no. <laughs> yeah, and I think just getting the laps into that truck, even though it's a different um, vehicle, it it got him some so much more exposure to this track and knowledge that and his crew chief, um, I'm sure was working with um, mm -hmm. uh, DMG or whoever he was in there. So DGM, yeah. 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 Uh, I like Priest and I actually like LaJoy and I think I'm going to stop fading this guy thinking he's a terrible <laughs> he's in a terrible car because it seems like he's actually in a decent car with the and results the that I'm in him because they sold off the other two charters and he's the only one that they're keeping for next year he will be Spire's full-time driver next year so yep. yeah uh, Corey LaJoy if, uh, hopefully we get another you know, good slash bad starting spot with this pick as well. I don't mind him and Priest. I think those are the two cheap guys I'm looking at. He really needs like 25 or below. Sure. So. Yeah. 30, like 28th is kind of what I'm hoping for in back. Christopher Bell, 8,400. Um, any love for Christopher Bell? I what to do with him? I am so stuck on him. I thought I was good using him and then I just. I lost it. Like I, I was good with Christopher Bell early on in the season, and then uh, he wrecked out for me in the in a in a high dollar lineup. But now I can't get him right. I feel like I don't want to play him tomorrow. I know Gibbs, my gut reaction. Gibbs, Gibbs did test it at this track um, preseason, uh, so I know he has show he has run some laps here. I mean, it wasn't apparent obviously with his speed for qualifying. But no. if you look at his consistency besides Darlington, he's been in the 20s on this type of track. So maybe this is a, about where he should be. So, yeah. So I think he is one that could finish where he started. Um, he's got a solid car. Again, remember the last couple of races, there have been like a lot of breakdowns, breaks. Um, it, it, this, this track is rough on cars. So I think his equipment's going to hold up. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, he's, he's interesting if, if he starts 20th. Yeah. Um, I think I'm going to have more ownership on drivers like Blaney and Logano. And then right. there's another, another name I want to talk about that I like that's similar in price. Uh, next up we have Kyle Busch at 9,900. Um, yeah. What's, what's there not to like the ultimate GVP play? Yeah. It, it, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Like, I don't know, like, why he didn't qualify well here, like, with all the practice and everything that he had with, um, like, he was so much faster than the whole field and Xfinity had a good race today, won the race, his 100th career victory in Xfinity. Congratulations, Kyle. Great job. Um, yeah, yeah. Now let the kids play. Get out of the <laughs> box. Please. I think that was his fifth race of the year, so. I think he's yeah. done for the year. No, no, he's, he, no, because he said he was going to be done after his um, – he's ran the truck once, but he hasn't ran that many um, Xfinity. I think he's got two more scheduled because he oh, said he was God. going to quit after his 100th, but now he's committed to those two, so he's still going to run it. Oh, jeez. So. Oh, boy. He's like oh, the, fuck. He's like the, the high schooler in the kiddie pool. Pretty much. <laughs> anyways, but anyways, he's, yeah, <laughs> he, he, his form is getting better. This is where he thrives, where there's practice and and yep. qualifying and a chance to adjust it. So, um, would it, be in. Would it surprise me if he qualified fifth tomorrow? No. Would I right. him at fifth and cash? No. But Absolutely not. GP, GP. Okay. Absolutely nailed it. I uh, couldn't say it better. Kevin Harvick, ninety one hundred. I like this pick. Yeah. I, I, I kind of I kind of don't mind it. I want him to qualify poorly, right? So I would play him over Bell. I feel stronger about Harvick for some reason. Something about this old classic Nashville track makes me feel like Kevin Harvick would be good at it, right? Because he's good at Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. So I could see him. I could see him historically be or coming into tomorrow being good at this kind of concrete track. So I, I'm going to take that kind of correlation and run with it, and then. 
not get myself overexposed unless he has a poor qualifying day. Right, right. Uh, any love for Austin Dillon at 8,100? Again, he's another one I never know what to do with. I do know that um, <laughs> the Childress and Hendricks cars have really been working hard together on engines and they've really increased their speed on like half mile and uh, speedway tracks. So um, that might be an advantage, but obviously doesn't look good for practice here. Yeah. He, he, he's about a 15th place driver. So if he starts below that 8,100, probably, I mean, I like him a little bit better than like to be on Deto, who's 200 cheaper, definitely better than Agreed. Um, Agreed. Better than Kurt Busch is 200 more dollars than him. So. I actually, I agree with that too. So maybe he's looking like a decent play if he can qualify poorly. But even you if know. he doesn't, even if he qualifies like 15th through 20th, yeah. I'd take him. I would too. I would too. Anything inside the top 10 though is likely out. Um, Daniel Suarez, 6,300. I'm just going to bite my tongue and mute my mic and you can go ahead. (laughs) Uh, He was not a guy I was on last week and it looks like that was a mistake. Um, I I love the price tag. I mean, that's what always draws me to someone like Suarez. I'm afraid of him qualifying too high, track unknown. So I don't like that. Uh, working against him I mean everyone's unknown to the track but you know Suarez being new to the circuit in in ways kind of makes me scared to um, pull the trigger but 6300 if he's going to qualify anywhere near 25th 24th sure inside top 15 no Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll throw you a bone here okay look who qual look whose speed was similar to his McDowell. No, above him. Oh, uh, you know, Dylan Harvick. Dylan. Okay. They're both Chevys. Yeah. Childress is actually, Trackhouse is actually working with Childress. So whatever the special sauce is that they're working with Hendrick might be yeah. sprinkled in his engine. So um, yeah, this car Justin might have Marks. Speed. Yeah, this, yeah. This car might have some speed. Yeah. And I mean, he's he's an okay driver. Uh, I just don't want him to qualify too high. I mean, that's right. totally relying on that. But 6,300 is cheap. And, you know, if Priest and LaJoy actually have a good qualifying day, you're going to be looking for someone else, to someone else for, for some value. Right. And I don't mind him. Uh, Michael McDowell, 6,600. Not as tough uh, as Jack. No, uh, not, not on my radar either. Hopefully yeah. he doesn't. Yeah, well, hopefully he doesn't, you know ruin us by qualifying poorly <laughs> uh next up we have brad keselowski 9500 i don't know what happened here Although, i don't either well, yeah um he he's usually been good in the high horsepower packages so yep that is true new track but maybe they can um he's got a great crew chief maybe he can um, what is his uh correlation in the uh track track correlation doesn't look too good no, Dover decent, the concrete. So the tire wear average, the skill of it with Darlington average, but the, the concrete factor of it um, in Dover, it looks decent. So, yeah. He's going to sucker us all in by qualifying in like 29th. <laughs> yeah, he, he's, he's going to be like um, Chastain. It was Chastain, no, Reddick today, who like was. Yeah. Qualified down there it's like, oh he's he's a cup driver you know he he definitely um can can do better than this and he really didn't no <laughs> I mean, the attrition be... of like some of the wrecks kind of, kind of moved him up the charts a little bit but other than that he didn't do it on his own accord that's going to be keselowski tomorrow anthony olfredo 1500 like, I, I know we're oh, we're, only, we're only in june right now this this goes till november but when do we hit silly season like when do we to the point where you know, he's kind of given up, mailed it in, looking towards next year. Like, are we to that point yet? Or do you think he's still, like, in the title contention? Well, he did win a race earlier, so okay, he's so still – Playoffs. Yeah, yeah, he's still in line. For, he won at um, Talladega, so he is in line for the playoffs. Um, so, yeah, I, I think he – I think he's going to take, you know – the course or the track um, correlations between the playoffs, like he's going to take those tracks more seriously from this point on, but 
yeah, Keselowski is a guy that doesn't try to win the race every single week. Right. Like he's he he is a lap turner. You know, he'll just do some. He'll just do his laps at some tracks and road courses, short. You know, some some tracks that he's not good at. Um, and you know, maybe this is going to be one of them. So maybe a fade is in order. Um, any love for Anthony Alfredo, fifty eight hundred? If he qualifies twenty fifth or worse. I would agree. Bubba Wallace, 65th or 6,500. I get the same. Yeah, same. They're, they're pretty much the same driver, just one $700 more expensive. <laughs> yep, <laughs> would agree. Uh, Martin Truex Jr., probably the last talking point. Yeah, no idea what happened here. Um, don't see him qualifying 29th. If he does, he will be the chalk of the slate. Agree. Um probably see him up in the teens uh not bad on these tracks i mean look at his uh average running position for darlington he, i think he pretty much just, is that the one he did like, pretty much led like yeah he destroyed it flag? yeah yeah he destroys darlington okay or did so this year and then um wasn't too bad at atlanta i remember um but yeah, he's uh, definitely going to be chalk if he's qualifying in this range. That's for dang sure. You're right about that. Uh, his, certainly uh, he, not a bad. His cars are better at hotter tracks, and um, you know I think this one in Nashville in a three o'clock race, um, I think definitely is probably going to be pretty warm tomorrow. So I think it helps him also. Yeah, Truex uh, definitely a guy that can break up the Hendrick uh, mold. Been trying for weeks. Maybe he gets it done tomorrow. Next up, we have Cole Custer. Still someone to talk about here at 7,100. Hopefully, yeah. he's qualifying right here. Yeah, this is, if, he, if he qualifies here, then definitely I would play him. I just I don't know what happened that he ended up that low. Unless they're just experimenting with things and they got completely got the setup wrong, which, which means that they'll have a better chance of having it right because they know what not to do. So, yeah. yeah. I like him over uh, Almirola and... Um, the other Stuart Haas guy, Briscoe. I usually play Harvick and, and Custer in the in my majorities. So, um, yeah, I like I like him. Seventy one hundred is not too expensive either. Yeah, and the rest of this group, it's if they start like thirty first, I, I don't even know if they're going to have like thirty nine cars in the field. So we'll have to see like what happens there. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, speaking of which, we have pretty, pretty much the bottom of the barrel. Anyone between Yaley, Smithley, Haley, McLeod, Blicky, Huff, Starr, and Gase? Nope, 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 nope. I somehow, <laughs> miss, I somehow miss Chad Fincham. But I don't oh, he's in this he's, race? Yeah, I don't think he's going to qualify. Yeah, I, I don't even know how, like, how many guys are going to take here. Like They might only take like 36, so some of these guys might be on the outside looking in. Because yeah, either way, it, they're all out. It like even if like Michael McDowell or like somebody just completely botches it and ends up dead last, they qualify and they're gonna get on owner points. Yeah, these guys. So yeah, they're, this is the no man's land. Um, maybe NASCAR can come up with better competition than rolling these cars out there. I'm the only time that you, yeah, the only time that you end up using these guys is if like Truex and. Hamlin both uh, fail tech and don't get to qualify, and they start uh, like 39th and 38th. Yeah, then you got to start one of them, you know, both basically them two. Which the Gibbs ones have been better, I, but they they went through yeah. a whole, and it's an impound race. So after qualifying, they impound the cars and reinspect them. If they find anything wrong, then back yep. to, to the rear. They throw out their time. So, yep. But uh, that'll pretty much do it. Um, Thank you for hanging on there with me towards the end of tonight. And um, we are looking forward to Nashville. Guys, uh, qualifying will be early in the morning. Uh, you're going to want to get into the Discord chat and get to the plays after it's updated with qualifying and you can get core plays. We're seeing some new subscribers. So thank you to those that have joined us. We're looking forward to a big race tomorrow. Hopefully you had made some money on the first two races this weekend, but this is the ultimate prize tomorrow. This is, these are the heavy prize pools. So we're going to get it done for you. Uh, we're looking forward to it. As always, guys, like, comment below. 
follow us at Fantasy Sports Insight. You can follow us on Twitter at FSI underscore DFS. You can find the link in the bio for the Discord channel to get those cores, projections, and all of the chat needs that you need for the race tomorrow. I am TK Nation 47. That is Mega Ruler 31. Um, enjoy your night, guys. Enjoy the race tomorrow and um, let's get some, so let's have some fun. <laughs> Happy Father's Day, Dad, and all the dads out there, too. Well, well said, sir. Thank you. And um, take care, everyone. <laughs>